Good morning, sweet humans. Happy Monday. Today we are going to embark upon a sweet vinyasa flow, focusing on noticing kind of the miracle angles of, of course, the practice, but, but also our life, right? Most of us at this point have transitioned into maybe kind of like our new normal, or if you have small little humans, they're going back to school, or big, biggish humans, they're going back to big school. And we're just trying to find this, this new sense of normalcy. And so today I want you to have, if you have it, a block, at least a block, and a blanket if you like it for the knees, okay? So I'm turning this around. And we're gonna start sitting up on the blanket. So I like to take my blanket and just give it a couple of rolls. So I have a decent amount of height. Sometimes I even like double or triple, like a burrito fold. I'll tell you what, when you get your hips up higher, you will stop trying to sit on the ground <laughs> without the blanket or without the prop. It just feels so good. When those knees get below the hip creases, it's like, oh, that feels so much better. So you can see my heels are kind of crossed right at the midline. That may not work for you. You may do more of a sukhasana seat where you're sitting more at the mid shin. Uh, you can even sit on a chair in the beginning of a yoga practice since you're at home most of the time you're, or these are at home. So, all right, let's find an easy seat. Sit up nice and tall. Draw your shoulders up towards your ears. Take the head of the shoulders back and then drop the shoulders down the back. And then just go ahead and move your neck a little bit side to side. Before we kind of even get quiet, just sort of letting the body kind of come into its space. So today we're gonna focus the practice on, on finding these like miracle angles. Um, Rod Stryker has a book called The Four Desires. He's an amazing yoga teacher known all over the world. And one of his chapters is on, on miracle angles, finding the miracle angle. And Einstein once said that there's two ways to live your life. One is as though nothing is a miracle, and the other is as though everything is. And this weekend, a friend of mine, I, um, her 15-year-old son, might be 14, I think he's 15. He, because life isn't working out and he's not able to race on his bike like he normally does, he um, decided that he was gonna <laughs> do an amazing feat and he was going to bike the same elevation as Mount Everest, which is, I believe, 29,029 feet. He lives in Colorado. And so what he decided to do was create a fundraiser so that some of the proceeds would go to this area, this track that he skied in in the winter, and some of it would go there and some would go for his racing fees. And he climbed, he, did, he created a thousand foot stretch that he did 29 times. He's 15. He started around 6 a.m. in the morning and he finished at 2.30 in the morning 20 hours later, 21 and a half hours later. And you're like, like the miracle of, I mean, could we just take a moment? Like, thank goodness he's all right. And, you know, she's like, I could be worrying about where's my kid at night, but I'm not, <laughs> I know where he is, but just the dedication, the grit, the perseverance. And, and I just think about there are miracles not always that big that are happening around us every single day all the time and often they're coming through our struggle and um, Carl Perkins once said if it weren't for the rocks in for the rocks in its bed the river would have no song and I think it's so easy to want to pass over our hard stuff and also at the same time feel like we're going to be stuck in it forever and recognizing that it is through the hard stuff that the song comes, that the lessons come, the growth 
comes. And that's part of who we are. We forget that. We are not born to be complacent. We aren't born to just have everything be comfortable. We aren't born the same. We are all born different. And so part of our life is uncovering these, these little miracles about who we are. So I don't want you to forget that. Like, you are a miracle. There will never be another you. And the amazing uh, things that had to line up in the universe for you even just to be here right now. So mm, let's just take a moment of gratitude as you close your eyes. I had a different idea of what I was going to do for this practice, and that is what just came out. So um, it's not fun how that happens sometimes. So. I want you to take a deep breath. Breathe in nice and deep through your nose. And just open your mouth and sigh it out. Now just begin a nice, normal, steady breath. Now what this young individual did over the weekend, some of us will probably never do anything like that in our lifetime, nor we, may we even have the desire to do anything close to remotely like that. And so I, this, it's never about having those comparison hangovers. You know what I'm talking about? Those comparison hangovers. It's not about that. It is about each of us having a human desire, and we all do, to grow, to transform. And that's why when things start to feel comfortable for an excessively long period of time, we might start to feel this like itch and just something's not right because there's a desire within our soul to continue to evolve, to continue to grow. Bring the hands together in front of the heart. Without the rocks, the river would have no song. Without our struggles, we wouldn't have our stories. And this yoga practice begins to teach us that it's time we write empowering stories. If there's an intention that you want to set today to fuel your practice, to guide your practice, to allow it to be your compass, your internal North Star, and then let your chin begin to bow down towards your chest. Let your hands come down onto the legs. You can switch your shins if you like, putting the other shin in front. Take your right ear, swing it towards your right shoulder. And if you're feeling plenty, stay here. If you like, take your right hand to the top of the head, gently drawing the head down. Lift up into the hand with the head, creating more space and length on the left side of the neck. If you want even a little more, you can drape your left hand. I don't feel the need to bind, but some days I just like to kind of drape it behind my back. You can even, I've just got that blanket I'm sitting on. I'm just kind of resting it on the blanket behind me. If you had a block, you could put it on a block behind you. And then release your top hand from the head. Take your arm if it's behind you that's bound. Let your chin gently roll down towards your chest. And then swing left ear over towards left shoulder. Optional. Take left hand onto the top of the head. Re 
release the right shoulder out of the ear. You can take the right hand, if you like, behind your back. And breathe into the low belly, allowing the breath to move up from the low belly into the solar plexus, feeling the three-dimensional shape of your own breath. Pay attention today when it gets hard, how you respond, how you continue to breathe. Release this top hand. Release your back hand if it's found. Let your chin again fall towards your chest. Inhale, lift up through your chin. And let's come up onto all fours. Tabletop position. Link it off to the side if you're using one. Spread your fingers. Take your knees so they're just slightly back. Make sure your hands aren't too narrow. So most of us do have a carrying angle. Mine isn't very big at all, but where your wrist is out further than your shoulder. That's how wide you want those hands. So again, mine are pretty in line with my shoulder, but for most people I'll say center a wrist in line with outer shoulder, which means you're taking the hands just a little bit wider you're turning the hands out just a hair. Allow the eye of the elbow to turn a little bit more forward. And then drop your belly, lift your sternum, open up your chest. And exhale, round your back. Our warm up today will be a little different. Inhale, cat cow is not different. But we'll do some different movements to kind of heat up the body, mostly in seated shapes. Inhale. Exhale. It helps the body just stay a little and the mind more present. Inhale. They aren't necessarily new movements. Exhale, but we don't do them as often. Once more, inhale. Belly drops. So we'll start with the familiar. Exhale. Round. Good, inhale, let's come to a neutral spine. We're gonna take our right foot to the outside of the right hand. So here's where you might want your blanket again under that knee. I'm gonna move my back knee back just a hair. And then lift up either onto the fingertips. You'll have a couple options here. So if your psoas is tight, the front of the hip flexors on the left side are really tight. It's nice to stay up high. Block could be under the hands. Some of you, it might feel better to come down onto the forearms. Front foot, you can turn it out 45 degrees if you like might even roll to the outer edge of the foot if you want a little bit more of a hip opener. Making it more active, you could lift the back knee. I'm gonna keep mine down, but if you wanted to, you could tuck the toes. And I'm gonna reach my right arm on the diagonal away from my right knee. I'm gonna keep the left forearm down. Good. And take another deep breath here. And then walk either, you can stay on the forearms if you're on the forearm, or you can be on the hands. You're going to roll, I'm going to turn my left forearm to the left, and you're going to roll to the outer edge of your left leg. And I'm going to hold my right ankle and actually scooch it in a little closer towards me. So extend your bottom leg straight. The left hand could be down. I'm going to stay on the forearm, so either one. I'm going to continue to scooch, so if you need more stretch, scooch your right foot closer towards the front of your mat. You could put your right forearm inside this knee and you're trying to rotate this outer right hip back. There's a pebble or a big old boulder right there. <laughs> Rolling over. Here we go. Now you might also get a chance to feel a little bit of a side body stretch. If you're on the hand, you're likely going to feel a bigger side body stretch than those of us on the forearm. Keep pushing. Now I've got the inner edge of the foot lifting a little bit, but I'm really pushing into the outer blade of the right foot to help me continue to rotate that outer right hip back. Yeah? Good. Now everybody come onto the forearm. So if you're on the hands, bring your left forearm down and you're going to step your right foot behind you. So I'm going to give two options here. Okay? Right hand's going to come behind the head and you're going to hover your left leg up off the ground. And you're going to exhale, bring that knee in towards your elbow and extend it out. Okay, so exhale, bring it in, 
and out. So you're working the inner thigh. Now, some of you, if you want, you're gonna push into your right foot, lift your hips. You can put now the outer edge of the foot on the floor and exhale, hug in, inhale down. Exhale, hug in, inhale down. Just got a little more exciting, then exhale, hug in, inhale down. Three more, hug in, inhale down. Two more, exhale, hug in, whoop, and down. Hug in, and down. Good, set your hips down. Stay on the forearm, bend your right leg, pick your right foot up off the floor, and take a thigh stretch. Good, so again, we're not doing, well that last move was a little different, but this move and some other things we're doing, not totally different, we just don't do them as often. Lengthen your tailbone. So here I'm pulling the heel in instead of kicking the foot back, but if that feels good to you and you wanna kick it back, you go for it. Okay, stretch the leg out. You can come all the way down Bend the elbow so that the center of your elbow, armpit, rib cage, hip, and ankle are in one line. And bring your right leg into tree pose. Okay, you're gonna push into the outer edge of your left foot, and you can stay right here, or you can pick the leg up. Now this is actually quite tricky to balance. You're gonna take your peace fingers and your thumb around your big toe. Remember, we're just warming up, so if it feels good, just stay in the tree. Some of you, this isn't a big hamstring opener, so if you wanna stretch the leg up straight, you can. You can see I'm wobbling. So core has to really hug in tight here. Good, soften your face. Turn the corners of your mouth up. Maybe stick your tongue out at me for three, for two. And if you roll backwards, you're doing it all right. One, let go of the leg, roll onto the belly. Roll onto the belly, sphinx pose. Inhale, lift the heart. Exhale, gaze towards your belly, round the back. Inhale, lift the heart. Exhale, round. We've got three more, and if you want to, inhale. You can tuck the toes or keep the tops of the feet flat up to you. And exhale, gaze to the belly and lift your hips and pelvis up. Slow pelvis down, inhale, exhale, again, lift. We have one more, inhale, open, gaze forward, shoulder blades back, exhale. Good, back to Sphinx pose, breathe in. Good, push up onto your knees, walk your knees in a couple inches, puppy pose, exhale, forehead to the floor. Let your hips and your puppy just rock a little bit side to side. Keep the arms stretching forward. If you lean hips right, you'll feel a little more stretch in the underside of the left arm. And vice versa, leaning left, a little more stretch under right arm. Good, walk the hands back up. Left foot's gonna go to the outside of your left hand. Runner's lunge. And we'll scooch the back knee back if you need to. Pad the knee. Lift the chest. Hands on blocks. You can bring them down onto the forearms. Soften your gaze. Soften your drishti. Imagine if you had just biked for 21 hours. <laughs> They did have some pit stops for some food and fuel, of course, but whoo, you had a good support team. All right, maybe you're on the forearms. Some of you didn't turn that front foot out. Maybe roll to the outer edge of the foot. I'm gonna extend that left arm again, this time going over to the right. I've been enjoying and the flow practices I do just at home are taking some time before I move, move, move to kind of heat things up, but in a slow, steady way. Good, walk the hands in. We're going into that hip opener. I'm gonna keep my right forearm down. Again, you can come up onto the hand. I'm gonna hold the left ankle with my left hand. 
And if you're tighter here, you just scooch the foot back, closer towards your back foot. If you're more open in the hips, you're gonna continue to try to bring this left foot forward, kind of towards, if you're on the forearm, towards that right hand. Maybe helpful to bring your left forearm against that inner knee and feel like you're trying to draw your rib cage back. You're almost as though you're gonna roll onto your back, but you're not. So you can feel that energy of trying to get almost where you start to feel your right glute a little bit, where you're starting to roll back enough that you feel you're not quite on it, but. Take another breath. And doesn't it just feel good on a Monday after a weekend? Because most of us do something on the weekends just to start out with some nice hip openers and things like that. Now left foot, it's gonna step behind you. First two, we're just gonna all do it with the hip down, unless you're just Jones in here. If you're doing with the hip down, remember that right leg, it's gonna stay lifted the whole time. So exhale, knee and elbow come in. Inhale, stretches out. You really have to push in this bottom forearm. We're not gonna sink in there. That's not good on the shoulder. Exhale, hug in. So if you're working a shoulder injury, please stay on the ground. Now, if you're gonna lift the hip, the right outer edge of the foot is down. Exhale, we hug in, push out, hug in, push out. Yes, hug in, push out. We have three more. Exhale, inhale, exhale. So heart opens, exhale, heart closes. One more, inhale, exhale, inhale. Set it down. All right, still on the forearm. Now, if your forearm is just getting sore, you could also come down all the way onto the arm because we're going there next anyway. Left hand's gonna hold left foot or ankle. Reach back and take the quad stretch. Lengthen your tailbone towards the back of your mat. Keep the heart lifting. Softly, fro softly draw those front ribs in. And then extend the leg out so the feet stack. And now you're gonna extend your right arm. <clears throat> Bend the elbow. Elbow, armpit, <clears throat> rib cage. Center your hip, center your knee, and center ankle are doing their best to be in one line. Good, gotta get that mic out of the way. Okay, tree pose. Left hand is in front to help support you. One side can be a little bit more precarious than the other side. And then you can stay here. If you're wobbling right here, you might stay here. Some of you, maybe you pick the foot up. You're going to notice your arm. Try to counter it. Ooh. Maybe that right elbow tries to sneak in a little closer towards you. And I am dancing here, people. You are not alone. If you're wobbling, if you're rolling backwards, you're rolling forwards. Let yourself have some Leela. Leela is... The Sanskrit word for playfulness, fun. Let it be fun. Good, slow with control, let go of that foot. Roll over onto your belly. Good, Sphinx pose. Sphinx pose, forearms out in front of you. Lift your chest, inhale. Exhale, push into the forearms round. Inhale, lift, exhale. Remember, three more. You have the option. You can lift the hips either through tucking the toes or keeping the tops of the feet on the floor. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Last time, breathe in. Exhale. Good. Inhale. Good. Walk the knees up. Puppy pose. Stretch the arms out. This time, if you like, bring your palms together. Bend your elbows and rest your thumbs towards the nape of the neck. Keep pushing into the elbows, lift the armpits. And then stretch the arms out, separate the hands, shoulder distance. Walk the hands in a little closer as you tuck the toes, pick the hips up. Lift the knees, downward facing dog. Take a breath in. Take a breath out. Inhale. Exhale. 
So nice way to practice with miracle angles in our life. Inhale is just little things like, oh, why could I be hitting this red light right now? What could be, what could be the miracle angle here that this could be saving me from? So keeping it kind of light, kind of easy, lift your heels, inhale. So that's slowly when life does get a little more challenging. You get a, an email maybe that you didn't expect or your partner says something. Inhale, stretch the heart, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, fold and bow. You've kind of worked with the mind. Inhale. Exhale to the heart to integrate a greater support system for yourself, one that empowers you. Release your arms by your sides. Inhale, reach the arms up. Now we're really going to flow a few times. Exhale, fold. Coming back to familiar. Inhale. First time, you could step back if you're wanting to jump. Jump, chaturanga. You can always put the knees down if you need to. And then you can go into cobra or up dog. We've done some sphinx, but this is your first little bit deeper back bend. Exhale back, downward facing dog. Take one breath, breathe in. At the bottom of this breath, look to your thumbs, bend your knees, step or hop. Lengthen your spine. Exhale, rebound. Reverse, inhale to the heart. Exhale, again, inhale, reach up. Forward fold, exhale. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, step or float. Inhale, up dog cobra, push into your finger pads. Exhale back, down dog. Not all the weight in the heel of the hand. Push into those finger pads, deep breath in. Bottom of the breath, look forward, step or hop. Lengthen, inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, fold. Reverse your swan dive, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, Tadasana, arms by your sides. Again, inhale, reach up. Forward fold, exhale. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, step or float. Inhale, open. Exhale, back. Breath in. Bottom of the breath, exhale, step or float. Half high, inhale, exhale. Inhale to the heart, exhale. Arms by your sides, big toes touch, chair pose. Utkatasana, reach the arms up, breathe in. Forward fold, exhale. Inhale, lengthen. Good, step to plank pose. Going to down dog, inhale, down dog. Exhale, knee to nose. Down dog, right foot down, inhale. Exhale, left, knee to nose. Inhale, right knee to nose, exhale. Down dog, inhale, left knee to nose. Inhale, to the right. Inhale, exhale, plank, 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 inhale, chaturanga, up dog, cobra, down dog. Now left foot, left heel, you're going to ground that heel like it's already doing warrior one, and the right foot will come forward. Now if it doesn't go, you may have to put your left knee down and bring it forward and through, and then re-spin. Left foot angling up towards the left corner of your mat, inhale, Virabhadrasana one. Hands can be shoulder distance. You can bring the palms together. If you do that, bring it a little more in front of you. And look up. Look towards your thumbs. Move that left frontal hip point forward. And take one more breath. Lift your low belly. Exhale, release your arms down. Step to plank. Pivot the back heel up, right foot back. You can always hover your foot and lower. Inhale, open, exhale, down dog. Now right foot, right heel grounds. Already feel the warrior one. There's a nice stretch there in the calf and the Achilles. I'm letting you linger here a little bit. And then the left foot comes forward and through. Likely the back heel lift up a little bit as you bring the foot forward and then put it back down. Warrior one, inhale. Now again, arms shoulder distance, overhead or palms together, 
on the diagonal, more traditional. Keep the back leg strong. Move that outer left hip back in space just a little bit. Sink a little deeper. Release your hands down. Inhale, back heel lifts. Left foot back. Chaturanga. Up dog, cobra. Exhale, down dog. This time, three breaths, yogis. Breath in. And if you want to, take a lion's breath. Stick your tongue out, sigh it out. <sighs> Inhale. Stick your tongue out, let it go. <sighs> One more. <sighs> Lift your heels, breathe in. Bend your knees, look forward, step or hop. Lengthen, breathe in. Fold, exhale. Big toes touch, chair pose, utkatasana. Push to stand, hands to heart, samastiti. Arms released by your sides. So good. Okay, we'll build on that just a little bit. Our big toes are still touching, inner heels just a little bit apart. Bend your knees, sink your hips, chair pose. Inhale, sink down a little deeper, a little deeper, and bring your hands to prayer. Good, now let your left forearm come onto your left thigh. Bring your hands so they're more clasped, one on top of the other, and turn your torso to the right. With the forearm down, you really can feel a sense of whether or not one leg is more forward or one thigh is. Keep the thighs level. If you're still not sure, look down. Good. Take another breath. It's a nice variation of the twist. It's not quite so intense in the upper back, but it does work the legs a little more, I find. Inhale. Reach up. Exhale. Hands to prayer. Second side. Okay, other hands on top, and we're twisting. Sit your weight back in your heels, drop your hips another inch, wiggle your toes, continue to turn the belly to the left. Breath in, breath out. I know, inhale chair, forward fold. Oh, exhale. What is the miracle angle of that? Ma'am, we are strong. Inhale, lift your chest. Step back, plank pose. Other foot goes back first. Good, plank pose. Push back to down dog. Good, down dog, ready? Take an inhale. Left knee first, knee to nose. Inhale, left foot into down dog. Exhale, right knee. Inhale, now you can pick up the tempo. Almost more like a Kapalabhati. You don't have to though. You can go slow and steady. Let's do one more each side. Inhale. One more onto the right. Plank now. Plank, plank, plank. Inhale. Chaturanga. Up dog, cobra. Exhale, down dog. Left heel grounds. Right foot's forward and through. Warrior one. Reach your arms up, breathe in. Exhale, drape your hands behind your back. Straighten the front leg, inhale, open your chest. Humble warrior. Humble warrior. I think to see the miracle a lot of times it takes definitely an element of being humble to realize that we may need to unlearn and relearn and do over again and again. Finding the miracle angle also takes imagination, right? Seeing things in a bigger, deeper way. Good, you're gonna release your bind, reverse your warrior. Now we're changing the direction of the hips. That knee is gonna stay right, left arm down, right arm up. Straighten your front leg, reverse your triangle, inhale. Exhale, arms are gonna come parallel to the floor. If you need to scoot your back foot up a little bit, please do, angle the back toes slightly. Reach forward, inhale, grab the block if you need it. Right arm down, left arm up. Gaze up, 
forward or down. Push into your big toe mound on your front foot. Micro bend that front knee. Carve the outer right seat under. Turn the low belly. Now, look down and take the top palm, turn it behind you, and drape it behind your back, coming into a half bind in your triangle pose. Keep the shoulder revolving open. And now see if you can get lighter in your bottom hand that you're not touching the ground anymore. So those top obliques are having to work now a bit deeper. Push your right hand. You can push against the shin a little bit. Keep the belly moving open. Good. And then you can let the hand come back to the block. Release your bind and now stretch the arm over the ear and as almost as though you're going to touch the ground, let those top ribs arc. Let your left fingertips kind of just feel like they're just hanging like a big old willow tree. Branches nice and loose, the arms nice and relaxed. Not like Harry Potter scary weeping willow, but like, ooh, just soft, relax. <laughs> and take one more breath. Good, and then hands will come down to the ground. Now, if you wanted to add some hops, some days some of you like to add those hops in, you could otherwise just plant your hands and step back into a plank. If you want to hop, slide your right foot back, center your hands under the shoulders, gaze between the thumbs, and you're going to try to bring your right knee into your chest. Hop up and down. Do it a couple times, otherwise you're back in down dog. And down, maybe take three, four, five. And we'll all meet in down dog. Up dog, cobra. Down dog. Empty it out. If you need to empty out the breath. Some days it'll feel like you want to try and other days you don't and that's okay. It's never about the pose, right? It really is never about the pose. It's about how the breath moves. It's about what the mind is doing. How are we releasing in the body? All right, right foot, right heel is going to ground. We're taking out, have you noticed we're taking out the down dog kicks today? Left knee is coming towards nose, right? That habit of always taking the down dog kick. I have it too. <laughs> it's a habit. <laughs> All right, reaching the arms up. Switch directions here. Reach the arms up, back toes angled in. Drape the arms behind the back as you inhale. Straighten the front leg. Reach the knuckles down the back. And then exhale, humble warrior. Reaching the knuckles up and over. Crown of the head coming toward or to the floor. Wrap the outer left hip back. Stretch the knuckles off the back. Here's where a strap, I didn't have you get a strap, but if your shoulders are tight and you happen to have one, this is a really good time to use it. Bend a little deeper in that front leg. Reverse your warrior. Release your arms. Now the hips are going to turn. Left knee, though, is going to still continue to go left. Right arm down your back leg. Left arm reaches up and over. Straighten the front leg. Reverse your triangle. Enjoy that stretch. And then inhale, come to neutral. Now maybe bring that back foot up just a little bit. On your next in-breath, left fingertips reach forward, and then left hand goes down, right arm goes up. Keep the side bodies long. So if the hand gets to the floor, but the rib cage is compressed on that bottom side and overarching on the top side, better to bring the hand up on the shin, get some more space, moving that left hip crease back, back get more length, revolve the chest open, Reaching the arm up. Now look down, turn the palm, top palm behind you, drape it behind your back. Keep the chest opening, chest is opening, and we're getting a nice little stretch here in the neck because the shoulder is going back and we're turning the head down. 
Now maybe get light in that bottom hand so it's not touching. If that's too much, just stay on the shin. But micro bend that front knee if you're really flexible here. It's easy to hyperextend. Push the hand against the inner shin. And then release the bound arm. Let the arm come over and drape. Now you get to compress in your left rib cage and you get to arch in the top rib cage. Now, for those of you not hopping, I'm gonna give a second option. Those of you that are doing the handstand hops, I want you to go ahead and hop. Those of you that don't want to, I want you to come into a straddle, a wide-legged straddle. Just walk your hands over to the right and let yourself just hang and forward fold and we'll meet you there. So hoppers, <laughs> hoppers, all right, you get to hop. Hands go flat. Now you're trying to keep the left knee coming in towards your chest. Reach up through the top leg. Light land, doesn't worry if your leg barely makes it off the ground. Just think light landing. Stay in the forward fold. We'll meet you there. So instead of vinyasa-ing, everybody meet wide straddle. Wide straddle, forward fold. I'm sure I'm gonna grab my block if you have one. Maybe you put your forearms on it or the top of the head. Back to your ujjayi breath. Now walk the arms out like you're doing a down dog. Take your heels in a little bit, your toes out, and I just want you to bend one knee at a time. And you can linger there, or you can go a little bit more quickly side to side. So I'm on the fingertips, or if you prefer, hands flat. Make sure you've gone the same amount each side. If you've only stuck on one side, make sure now you switch to the last side. Very good. And then turn your toes, all 10 toes, facing still the long side of your mat. Lift your chest up, hands under your shoulders, inhale. And now place your left hand right under your torso, reach right arm up. Now if you want to, bend the right knee Get a little bit more stretch through the left groin and maybe a little bit more rotation through that top arm. Top hand down, right hand under the chest, left arm goes up, both legs start straight. Hips trying to stay level as best they can. Option to now bend your left knee a little bit, getting into the right groin a little deeper. Push into that bottom hand or the block. Revolve the heart open, you can always look down here. Top hand down, both legs straight. Inhale, turn yourself back to the front of your mat. Plank pose, breathe in. All the way to the belly. Good, let's come all the way down. Forehead to the floor. I want you to take your fingertips off your mat in line with your shoulders. Let your feet be at least hip distance apart. And inhale, curl up through the chest. So a variation of a cobra, a little high cobra. If you like, just sway a little bit side to side. Go ahead and then come back down. Hands stay right where they are. If you're a little more open, you can scooch them in a little closer to you. If that felt a little bit much, scooch them the hands forward so they're not quite so close to your body. And inhale, come up again, inhale. Now look over your right shoulder as you exhale. Keep the left shoulder head back. Inhale. And then look over your left shoulder. Keep the right shoulder back. Inhale, center. Exhale, release down. Hands go behind your back. Interlace your fingers. Bring your legs maybe a little closer together. Hip distance. Some of you big toes can come all the way together to touch. Lift your legs, lift your chest. Shalabhasana. Good. 
Try to get a little more lift out of the legs. Bring the thighs up a little higher. Lift your sternum up a little bit more. For three. Spread the toes, two and one. Good, rest. So you can bring a cheek to the mat or stack your hands. Rest your third eye in the back of the hands. Maybe at this moment, as we come into another back bend, I want you to call upon an experience or a person, something where you're feeling a great deal of challenge, if there is one. And you don't need to have this answer, but I just want you to ask yourself, what could be the miracle angle? What could be? Okay, let's do it again. Shalabhasana, other index finger on top, or if you're feeling warm enough, we've done quite a lot for the body. So if you're feeling warm enough, Dhanurasana, reach back, catch the outer ankles, flex your feet. You can always put a strap around those ankles if you can't quite get the feet. And then inhale, lift up. What could be? The heart is open. You don't need to have the answer in this moment. What could be? You're just asking the question. Moving into the parts of the brain that can think a little bit more deeply. And hopefully the body's starting to feel a little bit more present with itself. For three, for two, and let it come down. Other hand on top, other cheek to the mat, depending on what you're doing. Bend the knees, windshield wiper the legs side to side. Good, stretch the legs back, hands next to your rib cage. Push the earth away, inhale. And down dog, exhale. Separate your feet so they're as wide as your mat. Walk your hands in a little bit closer towards your legs. Center your left hand a little bit more and reach your right hand, catching the outer calf or ankle. Turn and look under your left arm. And return that hand, inhale. And then left hand to the outside of your right leg. Turn and look under right arm. Good, inhale, exhale, walk your feet back into down dog. Inhale, come to your knees. Good, scoot your legs in a little closer. Come sit on the heels, and we're gonna take deer pose, okay? All right, so we're gonna do a couple different things and some hip openers that we've got coming up that might just feel a little different. So play around. I want you to have the right shin so it's parallel with the front short edge of your mat. Your right thigh is, your right knee is coming right out from the right thigh. So you've got a 90 degree bend here. Now your back knee is coming out from the back hip and the left ankle is going to scooch out so it's not in close to the heel, to the glute, it's, it's behind the knee. So you've got two 90 degree angles, okay? You're going to inhale, lift up through the torso. And then, this is like a variation of pigeon, we're going to actually come forward. So most of us, like a lot, would never have our right shin parallel in most pigeons. It's just really hard to pull off. But when we come at it with this deer shape, it makes it a little bit more accessible. Now I want you to notice the pelvic tilt here. So if your lumbar spine is rounding and it's pushing out, and we've done this before where we take the left hand onto the crease, and I want you to sort of tip it forward, roll that back outer hip forward, forearms on the ground and see if you can stretch your heart forward. Really gets into that outer hip here. It's, it's pretty intense. Allow your belly to kind of feel like it's beginning to almost lay right on that thigh. It's not going to totally lay on it, but just you definitely might feel the belly against the thigh. 
Now you can stay here. If you're feeling plenty, please do. Some of you, if you want, I want you to take your left leg. Don't move the right shin. And it's okay today. The hips aren't going to be square, okay? This left hip's probably going to be higher than my right hip. Flex your outer right foot. Stretch the leg back. If you're getting any pain in the knees, lay on your back. Take thread the eye of the needle with your right ankle on top of your left knee. Stretch the heart forward. And let your breath almost feel like it's going over those rocks, right? There's the discomfort and the breath is creating the song, okay? The breath is creating the song. The song of what could be. Teaching the mind to have what I've referred to before that comes from Abraham Hicks is where I first heard it, is having downward, downward river, like you're going with the flow. What would be a thought that would go with the flow instead of against the current? Like I am, I am paddling upstream right now. I am, this is hard and my thoughts are making it harder, <laughs> right? That takes serious practice, serious practice. If you're itching to get out, then probably everything is going right right now. Remember, you can always be in the deer shape. You don't have to have the back leg extended. You can also be on your back, thread the eye of the needle. Now, if you want a little deeper, keep the left forearm down. Pop your right fingertips over the right like you did in the higher kind of cobra and turn and twist your torso to the right. Let that forearm come back down. Oh. Slide the back leg up into deer. Oh dear. Inhale, bring the knees up to center. Exhale, just pause for a moment, bringing the soles of the feet together. Flutter your wings. I think we just smoothed out some rocks. I'm pretty, pretty sure we did. All right, you ready? For the second side? I know. Yes, you are. Left side. I'm going to turn on my mat, but you don't need to. You could. You just go to the back of your mat. Left leg. Left knee moving out from left hip. Left ankle coming out from the knee. Back leg. Right knee out from the hip. And then we're going to scooch that back ankle out so it's in line with that back knee. Now, you can feel. So, again, we're working to tip the pelvis forward so that we get this action of, of a cobra or up dog as we move the heart forward. So instead of the heart going forward, we round in. We're keeping the heart open. Forearms coming down, flex this left foot. Push into the whole outer edge of the leg, the outer left knee, the outer left foot, the outer left thigh. Now push into the forearms, stretch the heart forward, right? You can always get a little more forward, a little more forward, a little more forward. Good. Now you stay here. Just enjoy. Remember, you can be on your back as well. Or slide that right leg back. Again, let go of perfection. This right hip, it has permission today to be higher. Unless you're getting pain in the back, then that's not good. Come find a different variation. Keep pushing in ever so slightly at the outer edge of your left foot. That's your front leg. Outer edge of the thigh, stretch the heart forward. Good. 
downward feeling thought, right? Downward feeling motion of what could be. Usually we often can't quite wrap around her mind around the finding a miracle angle until really well past an experience has happened, right? And there's time and that's, you know, that's okay. There may come a day where you, you may start to see your mind though starting to move into what could be, what could be the miracle in this really crappy situation. Maybe left hand and this is like, Oh, really? Can I really go there? You don't have to, but the hand has the option. Left hand, push into that hand, turn the belly left. You may have to have the breath emptying out the mouth. I know for me, this is getting pretty intense. So if that's happening for you, your breath may adjust. Good. And then let your hands walk back in. Slide that back leg up into the deer. Inhale. Slightly different than last time. Soles of the feet together and you're going to scooch the feet out so that you have a diamond shape between the legs. So if this bothers your knees, you might need to take a block or a blanket and just support under the thighs here. And then let your head, it may not come towards the arches, but for some of you it may. Let yourself fold in. If this shape just isn't working and you want to take the traditional Baddha with the heels in closer, feel free. Some days I like to scoop my arms almost like tortoise pose underneath the outer shins. And slowly begin to, the arms are underneath, pull them back out, gently bring your knees together. Make sure you have a block handy if you've got one. If not, uh, I want you, if you have a wall near you, I want you to come towards legs up the wall, okay? And if you prefer legs up the wall to a supported bridge, please feel free. Feet are going to be hip distance apart. Push down into those feet, lift your hips. I'm going to give a couple options here. I'm going to take my block on the higher setting today. I sometimes just go medium, but if you have that availability and you want to go higher today, I'm going to show you an extra little thigh stretch in your bridge, and I'll give other options if you prefer to stay here. So block truly any height, low, middle, or high. Some of you, if you don't have a block, you're at legs up the wall, if you've got a wall. Chin is level with forehead. Now, you could take your legs, if you need to just give your legs some release and take a supported shoulder stand, you can stretch the legs up, okay? If you've had a very active weekend, this will feel so good. Now, if you want a little more thigh stretch, keep the left foot on the floor and then start to scooch your right foot. You may have to look or stop it and look, but take your right foot, tuck the toes and just bring the foot closer towards you so that you get a thigh stretch on this right leg. Some of you, you can put the top of the feet, the foot down. I tend to get pretty good cramps in my feet when I do that, so I like the toes tucked and I get a nice stretch in the sole of the foot. So legs up or right leg is back. We're taking a couple breaths here. And you could do this with the block on the lower setting as well, like a middle setting. It's pretty hard on the lowest, but middle should still be, still work. Legs are still up. Those of you in the thigh stretch, let's switch feet. Keep 
pushing the back of your head against the mat. If your left foot is back and you're taking the thigh stretch, continue to lengthen your tailbone towards the back edge of your mat, towards that right knee area. Of course, you can let go of that thigh stretch if you want a moment to meet the shoulder, supported shoulder stand people and want to extend the legs up. Let's take three more breaths here. Your legs may start to get a little bit tingly. If it's ever too much, just let them come back to the ground. Bend your knees in towards your chest. Take an inhale. Exhale, set one foot to the floor. Other foot to the floor. Pushing down into both your feet. Inhale, lift your hips. Slide your block out from underneath you. Cactus your arms. Just let your knees windshield wiper a little bit side to side. if there's any other pose that would help your body, your mind unwind. Please take a moment for that. Otherwise, hug your knees in towards your chest. Give yourself a squeeze. You can curl up if you like into a tiny ball, bringing forehead toward knees. Squeeze, tense everything up for three, two, and let it all go. One. Back of the hands down, palms face up. Push into your elbows a little bit. Kind of hug the upper outer arms in toward each other to help lift the spine. Feet go wide. Relax your skin. Relax the fascia that encases around your muscles. Relax your muscles. Relax your bones. Release your organs. Allow yourself a few minutes to enjoy Shavasana. As always, I will ring a soft bell three times when it's time to come out.
are two ways to live your life. One is as though nothing is a miracle, and the other is as though everything is. Notice how the moment you think to move your fingers and your toes that your body begins to respond. What a gift. about moving your arms up over your head and your body responds and it does it. You're so blessed. Reach those arms. Bend the knees. Place your feet to the earth. Let's roll to the right side. palms together at the heart, the eyes can stay closed or your gaze soft at the floor. Let's walk off our mat today remembering that there are miracles, big and small, all around us all of the time. And how can we start empowering ourselves to finding the miracle angles when things are not flowing in the way that we would like it to go in that given moment? How can we learn to support ourselves? How can we remind, we remind ourselves that this is part of our growth, this is part of our song, is these rocks. It's your growth, it's your transformation, and there is a miracle angle in there always. Bringing thumbs up to third eye. From the bottom of my heart, yogis, I thank you for practicing. Namaste. Thank you. Have an amazing week. If you ever have questions, I am here for you. Remember, these are on getting onto YouTube too, so subscribe. And as I get more classes that are shorter and different links on there, it'll notify you. And thank you. I will see you Wednesday for Yoga as Healing, 10 a.m. And that is the plan for the month. I think the last week of the month or some things, but otherwise, Monday, Wednesday, flow, healing, 10 a.m. Thank you. All right, yogis, have a great week. We'll see you next time.